This is gold. It's in our jewelry, our phone, and our computer. But where did it come from? Hi, I'm Amy. I'm part of a company called Conservation X Labs, and we're working to end the sixth mass extinction using technology, open innovation, and by empowering solvers to tackle the world's hardest problems. We do this by leading competitions or challenges to find and support innovative solutions to wicked conservation problems. This time, the focus is on artisanal mining. I set out on a journey to see how artisanal gold mining is impacting the Amazon. To understand the problem, see a few of the new solutions, and find out what more is needed. It all begins in Madre de Dios, Peru. We arrived in December 2019 and made the journey to La Pampa. It's known for being one of the most biodiverse regions in the world and also a hot spot for artisanal gold mining. The military guards the entrance to the ravaged landscape now. Conservation X Labs works with global partners to identify points of leverage where new innovation could result in exponential impact. So we joined one of our partners, the Center for Amazonian Scientific Innovation, or CINCIA, as they are doing work that shows what is possible. We've been driving through what seems like a, a dune field, a desert, with at most lots of grasses, in the worst case, just sand dunes. And this was a primary rainforest a little more than a year ago. What we do here with the drone is to fly these areas because we want to have a baseline of La Pampa. We are collecting per flight around 1,500 pictures. That's a lot of data. So one man, you know, scanning all of these, all of these photos takes a long time. So for that, we are we are planning to use deep learning algorithms to detect objects like the machinery miners are using. So we want to do that to see where, where is the mining active. Tracking this destruction brings valuable insights. We like to use these to develop models that forecast where threats will be in the near, mid and long term futures. So we don't react. That there's some kind of like, okay, in these areas, this looks like it will be under threat in a few months. So you can perhaps interrupt that. And you don't wait till it's destroyed to do something about it. So something that's preventative, that you're using your resources much more effectively. And there's a lot of potential because we're just scratching the surface of, of what to do with this. There's a lot more work that has to be done to be able to use these sorts of tools effectively for tropical conservation. Artisanal miners often use mercury, a toxic chemical, to extract gold. Approximately 30% of the landscape gets converted from forests to these kinds of mining ponds. And that means that you have a whole new novel ecosystem. Much of the question that we have is, what are these new water bodies? What's in them? How did they get there? Are they contaminated by mercury? Does fish that come from this lake represent a threat to people that eat that fish? Is there a, any contamination existing for the wildlife that grows up here? So we do rapid assessments of the biodiversity. We do chemical studies to see what the pH is and other important measurements to see if they're kind of functional ecosystems. But also we do a lot of contaminant studies, especially around mercury. We're collecting samples. All the samples that they collect, we analyze it in the lab. The higher you go in the food change, the higher you have mercury concentrations. 
and we are top predator so when we eat contaminated fish that can harm also human beings right and also other animals that eat fish we are in the middle of the amazon we need the amazon for the for, for the planet right so i think working in this kind of environment is challenging but it's very rewarding for us also it's important to produce information here and teach the local, the local people that live here, so they also can have the capacity to produce information. And that is very important because their future depends on them. And if we show them and we teach them the capacity to do the right decision, to produce information, to do science, they can do better, cho better choices. Measuring and monitoring the impacts of artisanal mining is important, but it isn't enough. Next, we joined another partner on the challenge, Pure Earth, to visit a mining site that was doing things a little bit differently. Pure Earth is working hand-in-hand -hand with local miners. This land is being remediated and restored, and miners like Pedro Infante are using mercury-free mining techniques. This is a mining concession. It's like a model how all the miners that they work in the same condition, how they can restore his piece of land. And we create some kind of model of how the miners or, or many, many actors can restore this kind of degradation, but it's very, very specific degradation. You can see the, the ponds, the little mountains of rocks, and this kind of soil, very, very poor soil. But I think that right now, we have to take advantage of the possibility to work with miners. Remediation and restoration bring new challenges. It's hard to, to see basically one place after another destroyed. Having just going to areas and, uh, you know, whether you use drones or use satellites or you go in a pickup truck to a destroyed area, you're essentially just seeing the corpse. And that's important, but it's hard. And again, you know, I'm tired of being a mortician. I want to be in the resurrection business. Right now we are in the reforestation tree nursery that we've established on the edges of uh, the mining area in Madre de Dios. So why do we need a nursery? It's because we need trees to be able to plant in areas that we want to reforest because they've been destroyed by artisanal gold mining. We introduced new technology using computer-controlled irrigation systems and an, a new technology for using much smaller tubes instead of these big plastic bags. We can upgrade your production uh, from 5,000 plants a year to 100,000 plants a year in the same space. Now we have 25 species uh, that are native species of trees that, that are critical for bringing back native rainforests. If you're going to reforest 100,000 hectares of deforested land, you need to have a lot of trees. But in this area, we can produce that because we can do 100,000 plants every four months and increase the probability that these plants will germinate, survive this very critical phase, and grow up to be robust enough that when we 
plant them in the harsh conditions of the mining zone that they will survive and grow up to be the new forest. When I look around here, I don't see rows of little trees. I see uh, a forest that is 200 feet high with animals, uh, birds, rodents, insects, butterflies. I was sent to the Peruvian Amazon to see firsthand some of the amazing work in progress. At Conservation X Labs, we're working to take it to the next level. In 2019, we launched the Artisanal Mining Grand Challenge to bring these barren mining fields to solvers across the world, awarding $750,000 to solutions for artisanal mining. Engineers, entrepreneurs, and makers from across the globe answered the call. We hear about the fires, we hear about the, the agricultural deforestation that happens, but artisanal scaled mining is a much less known problem, which is part of the reason for the Grand Challenges. Grand Challenges allow us to focus communities, and rare, raise awareness, and find new solutions from adjacent spaces around where we are. We do this because a Grand Challenge can help diversify the solutions. How? Mostly by diversifying the solvers. You've heard this said time and again, it's not just uh, the technologists that already work on mining necessarily, it's probably somebody in an adjacent space. It might be someone you know, it might be a friend, it might be a family, it might be your barista that has a brand new idea that might be the opportunity to change these sorts of things because we can bring people together to collaborate. Nearly 100 innovative new solutions have been submitted to the Artisanal Mining Challenge. They build on the work already being done on the ground in the Amazon and will leverage a coalition of global partners like WWF, the Moore Foundation, CI, Microsoft, and more. Our demand for mined resources is growing quickly, but will it come at the cost of our planet? With Conservation X Labs, you can use your talent to reignite hope for the future.